Hey everyone, I'm Fox at Foxy Games UK. Follow us via Twitter at Fox underscore PS double N as seen in the bottom right of your screen. Make us your regular news, rumor, aggregate source for everything console, gaming, and the Gaming Couch podcast. All links can be found in this video's description. In this news video, Microsoft finally admits Xbox One's launch failures and how they will never catch up to Sony's phenomenally successful PS4, courtesy of ArsTechnica.com. When I'm approaching the four-year anniversary of Microsoft's rollout and subsequent reversal of a controversial plan to let game publishers limit resale of used disc-based games. Looking back at that time recently, Microsoft Corporate Vice President for Windows and Devices Yusuf Mehdi acknowledged how that rollout fell flat and discussed how hard it was for the firm to change course even in the light of fans' complaints at that time. In a roundabout kind of way, Microsoft Corp finally admitted their fundamental errors that they made pre-launching the Xbox One. Here's a quote from Yusuf Mehdi. With our initial announcement of Xbox One and our desire to deliver breakthroughs in gaming and entertainment, the team made a few key decisions regarding connectivity requirements and how games would be purchased that didn't land quite well with the fans. What he means there is of course the DRM and of course not being able to trade used games. While the intent was good, we imagined a new set of benefits such as easier roaming, family sharing and new ways to try and build games. We didn't deliver what our fans wanted. We heard their feedback and while it required great technical work, we changed Xbox One to work the same way as Xbox 360 for how our consumers like to share, play, lend and resell games. This experience was such a powerful reminder that we must always do the right thing by our customers and since we've made that commitment to our Xbox fans, we've never looked back. End of quote. While it's an interesting reflection in light of an interview Medi gave to Ars Technica at E3 2013, when he really defended Microsoft's announced plans for the Xbox One game licensing, and Medi then serving as Xbox Chief Marketing and Strategy Officer, stressed at the time, here's a quote, This is a big change. Consumers don't always love change, and there's a lot of education we have to provide to make sure that people understand. We're trying to do something pretty big in terms of moving the industry forward for console gaming into the digital world. We believe the digital world is the future, and we believe digital is better. End of quote. So in that E3 interview, Medi also seemed ready to minimize what was already a growing chorus of concerns over Microsoft's positioning on used games, suggesting that it was hard to say what was the larger population of mainstream fans and what they really liked or thought of the move. Here's another quote. I think it's fair to say there's a segment of consumers at this show in particular who really pay attention, who are very passionate about all aspects of gaming and that we listen to closely. In a broader set of community, people don't pay attention to a lot of the details. We've seen it in the research, we've seen it in a lot of data points. Now, Looking back at Medi's 2013 interview, it's fairly easy to see Microsoft has grown the Xbox One into a very different device than it was at launch. Back then, Medi addressed the possibility of different licensing models, such as an all-you-can-play Netflix-style service for Xbox One games. Late last month, Microsoft unveiled just such a service, allowing unlimited downloads of over 100 games for just $10 a month. It's not clear now, if it ever was, why the existence of this kind of experimentation in distribution required limiting the functionality of disc-based games. Medi's E3 2013 interview came a week before Microsoft pulled a complete 180 and decided physical games on the Xbox One would work just as they did prior to ever launching the game console and a rollback that apparently required great technical work, Medi claims. Since then, other Microsoft executives have acknowledged that the problems with the rollout and Microsoft Director of Product Planning, Albert Pinello, told Ars Technica that we are a little further ahead of this change than our customers were in a late 2013 interview. Phil Spencer told an SXSW crowd in early 2014 that our messaging around what we believed in was confused during the Xbox One rollout. In his LinkedIn post though, Medi treats the Xbox One's used game debacle as an important learning experience that refocused Microsoft on the features fans actually want. He specifically calls out the excited reaction to 2015's surprise announcement of Xbox 360 backwards compatibility on the Xbox One as an example of how that philosophy can play out. Here's a quote. 
You hope to get such cheers from a new release of a game like Halo, but to get this kind of reaction for Xbox One's backwards compatibility reminded me yet again how delivering on the things that our fans really value trumps all. Now, just to put things into a bit of perspective and context, here's how that terribly embarrassing Xbox One 2013 E3 showcase went down excited to announce that Xbox One will launch this November at $499 in European markets and 149 pounds in the US and 149 euros at 29 pounds in European markets and 149 pounds in the UK. I'm very proud to announce that PlayStation 4 will be available at $399. Quiet. Not the greatest reminder of Microsoft's many failures. It's been fun hanging out with you all, but we've come to the end of another news video. If you found any of the information in today's video useful at all, go ahead and hit the like button. And if you haven't already, subscribe and share this video. You can also help us grow by supporting us via Patreon, starting from just $1. You'll find the link in this video's description. And remember, play games, not corporations. Thanks for watching, everybody.